I would like to introduce you Akil, aka Keep It Real, Aline. Uh, he's born in Toronto, in Canada, and raised in Montreal. Um, Akil is a 2008 graduate of Princeton University and 2013 graduate of Benjamin N. Cardoso School of Law in New York City. Now that that torturous ordeal is finally over, he aims to win a set a world record for most libertarian internships, having already worked at the Institute for Justice and the National Federation of Independent Business. His major areas of study are constitutional and international law, with a particular focus on federalism, foreign policy, separation of powers, and property rights issues, in which he hopes to advocate for the cause of liberty through his work at Cato and beyond. Please welcome Akil. Thank you very much, Slava. Friends, libertarians, comrades in arms, thank you for lending me your ears this morning. I'd like to address a topic that should be near and dear to the hearts of all of us in the liberty movement, as well as the movement's sympathizers, namely the relationship between the values of liberty and community. Now, I know that by now everyone in this room has heard of the recent survey of libertarian or libertarian-leaning Americans that was recently publicized by the Brookings Institution. You may remember that in that survey, there was a categorization of Americans' political views into a libertarian category and a communitarian category. The implication was that those who favor more government intervention to take care of the less fortunate and to serve the common good believe in this idea of community, whereas, by contrast, libertarians value individual liberty. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am here to break down that false dichotomy. There is no tension or contradiction between the values of liberty and community. Indeed, I would submit to you that we libertarians are the true communitarians because of our principled commitment to voluntary cooperation and mutual aid. Now, within the past several years, a number of articles have circulated through the media, both old and new, purporting to take down libertarian philosophy. Grow up libertarians, says Michael Lind of Salon.com. Libertarians are the new communists, according to two authors from Bloomberg News. Just last summer, one of my own law school professors published an article on the Huffington Post in which he took libertarians to task for ignoring the fact that human beings evolved to work together for their very survival. All of these takedowns are redolent of one of the most pervasive misconceptions about our beliefs out there. I'm referring, of course, to the idea that libertarians seek to bring about a, uh, uh, an every man for himself, dog-eat-dog -dog society, in which the winners take all and the devil takes the hindmost. In reality, Nothing could be further from the truth. In reality, we libertarians do not believe that each individual should only tend to his or her own garden. By contrast, we believe that those who need help should get it. The key point is that we believe that those who are in need should get their help, ideally not from the state with all of its coercive power, but from their fellow citizens as directly as possible and as voluntarily as possible. The reasons for this are manyfold, but the ones that I prefer to emphasize are the fact that there is no virtue or honor in forced cooperation or forced redistribution. If people work together voluntarily to help each other out or to take care of the less fortunate, they are showing a moral agency that leads that, that is emblematic of true virtue. If they only do so because they fear some punishment from a coercive authority in the alternative, then that is not compassion that they're exhibiting, it is mere compliance. What we believe, what we seek as libertarians is a society based on people working together by choice to serve the common good and to help the less fortunate. Not a society based on confiscation, coercion, or submission to a coercive, overbearing central authority. In short, we seek true community because we seek a meaningful personal interaction between free men and women in a free society. That is a far more meaningful vision of community 
than anything that our more statist-oriented counterparts have to offer. So I would advise all of you to keep that in mind the next time you inevitably get into arguments with those who do not share our viewpoints. Remember to emphasize that we do not seek to bring about a, a situation in which each of us is on his or her own. We want people to cooperate on a deeper, more meaningful level, true community, through liberty. Thank you very much. All right, that was uh, very good. It was excellently delivered. I don't have any, any comments really on the delivery and presentation aside from that you were uh, 30 seconds over, so it could have been a bit shorter, but um, extremely good job. Uh, substantively, one thing I would add, you, you don't really have much time for anything else, but one thing I'd like to, to talk about um, when, when this topic comes up is I'd like to quote uh, some guy named Tom Palmer um, about how, um, how rules are important in this kind of thing, and they're abstract in nature because we don't know everyone in cooperation, blah, blah, blah. But his, his, uh, his myths of individualism on the libertarians.org uh, website is, I think, a great source, but very well done. Um, great job. Well, you got my vote. That, that was, uh, uh, I would definitely vote for you for virtually anything. Uh, it was a very good, strong opening, and I'd like everyone to remember the way that Akil used the hand gestures here. This was very powerful. Uh, we have two principles, liberty and community, or communitarian. And then the way these are implicated. Every one of those did strengthen and, and communicate a bit more what was in the, uh, in the words that were spoken. So I thought that was exceptionally well done, made it more powerful. I gather you've had good legal training, and this may have been a part of it because this is a, a, the kind of speech that you would, you would want your lawyer to give in front of a jury <laughs> if you have been uh, accused of something especially if you're guilty, uh, we would want this speech. Um, I have nothing else to say. I think that was exquisitely well done. Uh, it, the only thing I would add is you could have cut out your 32 seconds because you had actually two conclusions. You conclude, and then you conclude a second time. The second conclusion could have been taken out. Good job. Thank you.